Welcome, game design students, to the Collect Split Screen Adventure Activity, where you compete against another player to be able to collect the most items available on the map to you and uh, see who the victor is. I've actually added in a couple features between the last video and this one that you might not have uh, seen previewed in the previous videos. The first one being a jump mechanic that should work in both games. So simply put, when you run, your player is now able to jump with the space bar for player one and the left, the right control button for player two. And you can tweak and toggle the amount of jump just by going to the jump amount and adjusting this value right here. The jump amount. Actually, I'm gonna get rid of the current jump amount being shown because it might be confusing for you. So let's just clear that up and load back over here and we shall see that only one jump number is available for you to see that you can adjust to determine how high that player can jump during the game. So maybe some of you want to make the jump higher so you can reach the top of the pillars or maybe you want to kind of keep it a bit lower just enough to kind of have to maybe you can jump over one another or jump to reach something or jump up a little bit of a pathway or platform or whatever you want. I've added in that jump and I've also added in a power up which I'll talk about soon but in this video we're going to go over how the few core mechanics of this work and then what you can do to kind of create and customize your own experience and I really hope in this kind of example you don't get caught up in the idea of making a map just like mine which kind of open with different coins maybe you want to make a maze to see if you can collect the most coins in that maze before all are collected or maybe you want to uh, be able to have a an experience with verticality you can climb up and down things Maybe you want to make an experience that has some jump puzzles to be able to reach some of the coins. So using the jump mechanic requires some really tricky positional jumps to see if you can collect the most coins by completing that jump puzzle first. Tons of ideas to work with. So what tools do we have to create these experiences? Well, first, as always, we have a light. And then we have this world, which includes all of the cubes and all the things that make it up. And then we have our players, which are very similar to our, our uh, soccer players. Um, Actually, I think they're exactly the same <clears throat> in many ways. So just like those, you could actually go in and disable the visuals and then change them up to be something else of your own customization. Feel free to totally do that. Just so you know, in our prefabs, we actually have these collect players separate from the arena players so that you can kind of maybe adjust those prefabs and maybe you want, maybe you make a change to collect players visuals and then you want to update the prefab. All you do is you click and drag it back over its own name and then you update it with the new information. So that's the way that you can save the prefab info. So not that much if you watch the previous tutorial to update you on this. However, the main two systems that you'll be working with are the collectible system and the power-up system. Let's start with the power-up. You have a power-up prefab that you can click and drag into your scene and place wherever you want. The way this power-up works is that if it's touched, it's gonna add speed to the player, how much you wanna add and for how long before it resets back to normal speed. So you could have like a small boost for a lot of time. You could have a large boost for a short amount of time. And that's totally up to you. So one thing you could do here is think about adding multiple power-ups. Maybe I add, I don't know why that one went so far away. Oh, it's on the other one over here. Maybe we want to have like in some spots, the power-ups are kind of short and sweet little bursts, but maybe you have one that's kind of the contentious one at the center of it, a harder spot to reach in the map that uh, is a bit more of like a perma buff. It's not, as dramatic but maybe this is the one where you only get a little bit but you get it for 30 seconds so it's like quite a substantial boon to your character now we haven't added in any user interface to show the speed boost buffs that's something that's a bit outside the scope of what we need to be doing right now but the idea is that you can add different boosts into the world and adjust their values in kind Technically, we could provide boosts for other different stats like the jump, for example, but we're gonna keep it not too cluttered and busy in our logic for now. Of course, if you wanna make your own custom power-up look, all you have to do is actually attach a power-up script to an object and it will automatically figure out how to work as long as you adjust the values. So I could make anything a power-up uh, to be able to be collected as long as I have a, a, uh, a trigger collider and the power-up script that's attached to it. So you could have kind of go a bit wild and, and how you uh, make those power-ups look or just use the one that I've included in the game in the first place. So I'll leave that one in here for now. Uh, let's just see how it works really quick. This is to make sure we understand it here. So it's to the left of player one, it looks like. Let this load up and here's player one. Look at its speed currently and now touch it and bam, I got this nice speedy boost just for a couple seconds to kind of get a nice little head start on stuff. I would go out of my way in this map. 
I take a strategic risk to go out of my way to make up for it for lost time with a little speed boost there. So something that you might want to consider implementing in your logic somewhere along the way. But the real interesting part of this is the collectibles. Right now, we only have one type of collectible, and it's a coin, and it has really just one <clears throat> uh, script on it, which is the rotate object script. This is a script you can attach to things to get them to rotate at whatever rate that you want. So you crank this up, it'll rotate faster or crank it down to rotate slower or in the opposite direction. You can play around with that a little bit. The main thing for the collectible though is that it's tagged as collectible and also that it has a collider with a trigger. This is going to communicate to the player that it's something that can be picked up and that can be, well, uh, interacted with through a trigger interaction. The game works by keeping track of how many collectibles each player has contacted and absorbed into itself, basically. So everything that's a collectible needs to be stored under this menu, because this is what's keeping track of the collectibles. You could attach custom players to these slots, but it's going to come built out of the box to work for you. Notice here where it says number of collectibles left is zero, but that's because the game hasn't started yet. When I run the game, uh, start the game up, we're going to see that it actually automatically updates. There's 17 collectibles to be gotten. And every time I get one, that number decreases. And the game shows its final win state once all the collectibles have been gathered. Notice that player one has four and five. I'll get my player two going at the same time, see if I can control this. Okay, let's see if I can get over here. The race is on to get these collectibles. And oh, here's one more. Uh, turning the wrong way. Let's go. Oh, red. Let's go. Oh, they're battling it out. This is epic. And red has got it. Player one wins with a score of 10. So it keeps track of the collectibles. And technically there's one collectible left, which is our canvas, but the canvas doesn't get counted in terms of keeping track of the winner. So what we need to do if we want to make our own collectibles is, well, first of all, let's make one. Maybe I'll make just a box. Uh, I'll call this present. It'll be a collectible. And I'm going to just move this and maybe, uh, maybe not too far away from a player just for testing purposes. And like I said before, this present is going to have a collider that's a trigger and we are going to attach to it uh if we want to the rotate object let's just do this and have it rotate uh maybe a little bit fast for fun but the main thing to do is to make it a collectible and with these three things three things put into place it's going to work but there's one issue here remember i haven't yet put it under the collectibles list so technically i'm going to be able to collect it and get a, a score but the game's not going to keep track of it in terms of the number of things it's looking for for a winner. So it's working, but I need to add it under all collectibles here so that now when I press run, my all collectibles here uh, has 18 things, including this one to be collected. And now if I touch it, I collect it and it counts towards my score. Awesome. So that's going to be something that's uh, pretty awesome to work with. Uh, I'm gonna make an adjustment and I'll be back in one sec. Actually, you know what? I think that's going to be enough for this experience. So again, we have some nice kind of simple building blocks for these two experiences. But the main idea for your designs is that there's so many ways you can combine these features into interesting competitive gameplay. Verticality, ramps, jump puzzles, mazes, uh, have make two or three different versions of a clickable game that that you can challenge with your friend to see who's the better at different types of experiences using these basic mechanics. And of course, if there's any other mechanics you want to add to either the soccer game or the collectible game, feel free to ask and we'll see if we can build something together in person or online. Best of luck, looking forward to playtesting and challenging you with your competitive experiences.